the Kraft Food Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. We say one and only because there just isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is different, and it tastes different. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. More Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it. Make your salad better tasting with the one and only Miracle Whip. For years, the great Gildersleeve has carefully fostered the idea of keeping his little family close together. Since Marjorie, Bronco, and their twins moved right next door, it's been a very pleasant situation all around. And this morning, Marjorie and Bronco are discussing steps to ensure this harmony. Marge? What is it, dear? I've been thinking. Maybe we ought to build a wall between us and Mr. Gildersleeve. A wall? Yeah, or a high fence. Why? Auntie likes the idea of adjoining backyards. We don't want to antagonize him. Oh, well, I'm not trying to antagonize him. Then why put up a wall? Well, I think maybe the twins are bothering him. You know, they're running back and forth like a couple of ants. Mr. Gildersleeve deserves some privacy. Oh, don't be silly. I he enjoys them. Yeah, you say that, but they're beginning to get into things. <laughs> they're so cute. We think they're cute, but your uncle's a bachelor. He's set in his ways. You may not care for a couple of little bulldozers underfoot all the time. Well, I know they spend a lot of time over there, but Auntie never complains. Oh, he gives us that big politician smile of his, but I have a feeling he'd welcome a wall. Let the kids tear up our property. Oh, maybe you're right. And if you're putting in a vegetable garden, I suppose it should be fenced. Yeah. Yeah, to keep the twins out of Mr. Gildersleeve's yard and Mr. Gildersleeve out of my cabbages. <laughs> well, Bertie, I see Marjorie's twins are up early and romping about the yard. Yes, sir. They've made a regular pass between their house and ours. They're looking up here at the window now, Mr. Gilfrey. Yeah, watching for me, I guess. Hello, Ronnie. Hello, Linda. Look at them wave back. <laughs> they think I'm a great man. <laughs> Intelligent youngster. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> there they go. Why, George, it's a fine thing when a man can have all his family close around him. Yes, sir, that's the way you've got it. And that's the way I like it. Nothing like living in peace and harmony. Now, beat it! Get off our property! Leroy! Get over in your own yard and stay there, you little twerp! <laughs> Leroy, who are you calling twerp? Roger's brat. <laughs> little twerp. Leroy, that's no way to talk about Marjorie's children. Remember, you're their uncle. Well, why don't they show me a little respect? <laughs> oh, my God. What did them sweet little dumplings do, Leroy? Yes, her sweet little dumplings. Ah! <laughs> Leroy, what did they do? They smeared black paint all over my bike seat. Black paint? And I sat in it. Look at the back of my blue jeans. My land, black and blue jeans. <laughs> they found some paint in the garage. So what did they decide to paint? Good old Uncle Leroy's bicycle seat. I sure hope Miss Marjorie and Mr. Bronco didn't hear you call them sweet little dumplings twerks. I hope they did. That'll do, young man. And just in case they did hear you shouting at the twins, I think we should go over and apologize. Apologize? You heard me. Now march. I won't tolerate dissension in the family. But I... Uh, march, Leroy. Okay, but I don't get it. They smear my bike seat, I sit on it, and then go up with paint on my pants to apologize. <laughs> 
Well, now, my boy. There's Bronco out in the back, yeah. Oh, you're making a big thing out of nothing. Bronco didn't hear me. He wasn't even out in the yard when I chased him home. Well, we'll make sure he didn't hear you. Hello, Bronco. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Leroy? Hi. Bronco, Leroy has come over to make a man. Oh? What for? Didn't you hear what Leroy called the twins this morning? No. What did you call them, Leroy? I called them a couple of... Leroy! <laughs> yeah? What did Leroy call the children, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, if you don't know, we won't have to go into the matter. Now you say that. Leroy. What's this all about? Hey, uh, uh, Bronco, I uh, see you have a tape measure in your hand. Uh, measuring something? Yeah, well, Marge and I have been thinking about building a wall. A wall? Between us? Yeah? Oh, boy. <laughs> of course, we were going to talk to you about it, Mr. Gildersleeve. I was just trying to get an idea about how much it would cost. No, Bronco, there's no reason for a wall between our little family. Well, uh... Unless, of course, you and Marjorie want a wall. Oh, no. No. Well, we were just thinking about you. We realize the twins are getting pretty active, and we don't want them annoying anybody. Bronco, what do you say? I can't think of a single case where they've annoyed anybody. Oh, brother. <laughs> and you, Leroy? Oh, no, no, they're sweet little dumplings. <laughs> well, I still think a wall's a good idea, Mr. Gildersleeve. You know the old saying, a good fence makes good neighbors. But, Bronco, we're not neighbors, we're relatives. There's a big difference. I'll say. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, we wouldn't think of putting up a wall without your permission. If you don't mind the twins all over the place. No, indeed. We like to have everybody come and go as they please. And particularly the little tyke. We wouldn't have it any other way. Well, Marge and I will certainly go along with that. Yeah, that's fine with us, isn't it, Leroy? Sure, fine. Let's go home. <laughs> well, come over any time, Bronco. Yeah, be seeing you, Mr. Gildersleeve. So, oh, Leroy. Yeah? I think I should tell you. You sat in some black paint. <laughs> He's telling me. <laughs> Ain't Mr. Bronco going to build a wall, Miss Gilsey? Oh, of course not, Bertie. He was afraid the twins were becoming a nuisance. But I talked him out of that. Well, I hope you talk Leroy out of it. Well, Leroy doesn't understand small children. He lets them annoy him. But they're not mischievous. They just have busy little minds, inquiring little hands. Yes, sir. They're busy, all right. I saw them outside a while ago with their little red wagon. Oh, good. Well, tell Leroy I'll be home early, Bertie. All right, Miss Kelsey. Well, don't see the little rascals. <laughs> Guess they skedaddled home again. Nothing holds a child's interest very long. Oh, what did I step on? Oh. What happened, huh? Leroy, it seems I stepped in the twins' little red wagon. Yeah? You okay? I guess so. How about that? Cluttering up our yard. No, Leroy, let's not get upset about these little things. We've learned to laugh them off. Okay. You want to laugh it off, Mr. Mayor? You want me to help you out? <laughs> Thank you, my boy. Uh, oh, oh. Hey, you got dust all over the back of your suit. No. Here, let me brush you off. You're not so hard, Leroy. Well, you picked up a lot of dust. Now, who lined up those tin cans across my driveway? Don't ask me. I'm not going to tell on Ronnie and Linda. <laughs> By George, I'll kick him back on Bronco's lawn. Yeah, I hate to spoil whatever they're building. You'll just haul them back, on. Yeah, I'll kick this one so far they'll never find it. Oh! That rock had a cannon. <laughs> 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 This isn't funny. I know, but like you say, laugh it off. <laughs> yes, yes. 
Well, I'm going to get in the car and get out of here before something else happens. <laughs> Nearly broke my toe. Uh-oh. Little fingerprints all over the fence. Sure is nice to have a little tight still on, huh? All right, Leroy. You pull that garden hose out from under the car before I back out. Okay. I guess the twins were playing with it. Oh, water! The car is flooded! Yeah? Hey, somebody stuck the hose in the glove compartment! Turn it off, off Leroy! Okay! <laughs> Handcuffs full of water. Feet soaked. Son, found it a bronco once a wall. I say let him have it. What did you say, I said let him have it! Okay! No! Leroy, turn off that water! What was the idea of turning it on again? You trying to drown me? You said to let you have it. <laughs> I didn't either. I said let him have it. Oh. Oh, never mind. Ooh, what a mess. Come here and help me haul these seats out of the car. How do you like those little brats putting the hose in the car? I wouldn't stand for it. I'll got to put my foot down. Well, I guess something will have to be done. Climb in and get hold of the front seat. Let's put it out here in the driveway. Darn little twerp. Quit grumbling. I'm the one that got wet. You know, I'm lift up on the seat. I'm lifting. You're all right. Let's take it on out. Yeah. You want to let those kids get away with it, huh? Well, I'm going over and see if some arrangements can be made. Arrangements? Put up a barbed wire fence. You're all right. You keep your nose out of it. I'll handle this. Go on over there and get tough. You get a sponge and bail out the car. I'll be back in a minute. Lay down the law. I'll tell them all. Wet socks. Well, I'm not going to lose my temper. While the car seats are drying in the sun, I'll just drop in and tell Marjorie and Bronco a wall is okay by me. If they ask me why I changed my mind, I'll say I want them to be happy. I don't have to tell them I want to be happy, too. <laughs> mm, shoes are a little soggy. Should have left them in the sun, too. You! Marjorie! Bronco! Anybody home? Hello, I'll just come on in. Oh, thank you, my dear. <laughs> Uncle, your shoes are wet. Hey. Well, nothing wrong with the water commissioner wearing wet shoes. <laughs> Where's Bronco? I have good news for you. You too. Oh? I've been thinking it over, and I want you kids to go right ahead and put up your wall. Oh, really? You bet. The sooner, the better. Oh, that's very nice of you, Auntie. I know Bronco will be pleased. Yeah, he looked a little unhappy with me this morning. Where is he? Oh, he's working in his vegetable garden. I'll call him. Bronco! Yeah? I'll be here. I'll be right in. He'll be right in. Great. He'll be so glad to hear you approve of the wall. Well, I believe in staying on the good side of your in-laws, even if it's on the other side of a wall. I haven't seen you for the last hour. Yes, well, I have news for you. Say, your shoes are wet. I know. <laughs> what have you been doing, wading in your reservoir? <laughs> Believe it or not, I just opened my car door. Uh, what? Never mind. I just stopped by to tell you I've changed my mind about the wall. Change your mind? He wants us to go ahead with it. Yep. I knew you'd be happy to know that I think a wall is a good idea. Why? Why? Well, because, uh, because, uh, that is... Yeah, you see, honey, your uncle doesn't really think it's a good idea. He's just trying to be nice. Oh, no, I'm not, Bronco. Auntie, are you just trying to please us? No, no, I'm not. Yeah, I've reconsidered, and I really think a wall is a good idea. So build it. Oh, no, you aren't very convincing, Mr. Gildersleeve. But, Bronco... Mark, you should have seen the stricken look on his face this morning when I mentioned wall. I wouldn't put a wall between us for anything. Bronco, I insist on... No, I can see right through you, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> you can do no such thing. Now go ahead and build the wall. <laughs> look at him, Mark, getting red in the face. What a performance. This is not a performance. I mean it. Oh, Uncle. He's willing to pretend he's angry just because he thinks we want the wall. Well, I want the wall, too. Please. <laughs> Uncle, you're so amusing. Well, I do. No, no, you're just saying that. 
We know you don't want a wall. But don't you worry, we won't build it. But, Brocco... But we appreciate what you're trying to do, Mr. Gildersleeve. Confound it, Brocco. I'm trying to tell you. What a cooperative relative. What a difficult (laughs) son-in-law. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Most good cooks know that salad dressing really makes the salad. But I wonder if you know which salad dressing in particular will give your salad the exceptional goodness you want it to have. Well, I think you'll find that salad dressing is Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is simply delicious. It has a flavor that's lively, teasing, and yet not a bit too sharp. Millions of folks say Miracle Whip tastes just exactly right. And Miracle Whip has a flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing because Miracle Whip is actually a different kind of salad dressing. It's made from a secret craft recipe that combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become America's favorite salad dressing. Actually, it's the most popular salad dressing ever created, outselling the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. So whether you're serving a luscious fruit salad, a colorful vegetable combination, a shimmering gelatin mold, or a main dish meat or seafood salad, remember this. To make your salad truly delicious, make it with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Get a jar tomorrow. Just be sure you see the name Miracle Whip on the jar you buy. There's only one Miracle Whip salad dressing, you know, and it's made only by Kraft. Let's get back to the great Gildersleeve. When his niece and her husband decided to build a wall between the two properties, the great Gildersleeve objected. Now that he's changed his mind, he's having a little trouble convincing them that he really wants a wall. The thing is, they need a wall, Bertie. Something to contain the twins now that they're roaming around. Yes, sir. Especially when they roam over here and fill your car with water. (laughs) Leroy, that's not the only reason I favor it. I know Marjorie and Bronco want it that way. Let's remember the wall was their idea. Okay, why don't they put it up? Well, because I went over and told them to. I don't get it. It's simple, Leroy. Bronco suggested it, and I said no, because I thought they were trying to be nice to me. But when I suggested it, they said no, because they thought I was trying to be nice to them. I still don't get it. (laughs) Who's trying to be nice to who? (laughs) Like your uncle says, it's simple, Leroy. Mr. Bronco wanted to put up a wall, and Mr. Gillsleeve didn't. That's right. Then when Mr. Gillsleeve decided he did, they decided they didn't, because they thought Mr. Gillsleeve didn't when he did, so they didn't. (laughs) I still don't get it. Leroy, the important thing is they are not going to get away with being nicer to me than I am to them. See you later. You going back over there and argue about who's nicer? No, I'm going to Peavy's for some smokes. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Uh, give me one of my cigars, Peavy. There I am. Say, give me a couple. Maybe I can get Bronco to smoke one. Maybe you could if you'd buy a better cigar. Eh? <laughs> All right, TV, just give me my usual brand. Yeah, yeah. Bronco doing you a favor, is he? Yeah, I'm just trying to get him to put up a wall he wants to build. How's that? They were going to build a wall between our places until Bronco made up his mind I opposed it. Now I've got to convince him I'm all for it. Well, sometimes a wall is a good idea. Mrs. Peavy and I discovered that some years ago. Oh? We got along very well with this particular neighbor until one morning I went out to the garden to pick some lettuce. Guess who was already there picking lettuce? Your neighbor? No, a goat. (laughs) Seems our neighbor got interested in goat's milk, and the goat got interested in our garden, and that's when we got interested in building a wall. (laughs) Why, George Peavy? Bronco has a garden. You don't care. A goat would force his hand. 
You know where I can get one? Well, the only old goat I know is Judge Hooker. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I mean a goat that'll go after a vegetable garden. <laughs> the judge has gotten into mine several times. <laughs> Pretty hard to keep your zucchini with the judge around. Phoebe, I'm not going to stick the judge on Bronco's garden. Then, well, that's just a suggestion. Tell you what I can do, though. I can get a few chickens and frighten Bronco into putting up a wall. He wouldn't want chickens in his garden. You do that to a relative? <laughs> I'm just trying to be nice to him, Phoebe. Actually, if I make him build a wall by shooting chickens into his garden, I'll be doing him a big favor. You no, know, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> driveway pretty fast. Hope the chicken crate didn't bounce out of the truck compartment. No, they're still there. Yeah, how do I get them out of the crate? Bertie! Hi, Uncle, what you got? The chickens, Leroy. You caught them to kill me? Yeah, I brought some chickens home, Bertie. Chickens? I need a little help. Yes, sir. Here they are, Bertie, in the truck compartment. Mr. Gilsey, what you gonna do with chickens? Well, as a matter of fact... They're going to build a wall. Yeah? What are they, trained chickens? <laughs> Bertie knows chickens lay eggs, but she never heard of a chicken laying bricks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll admit it's a sneaky thing to do. But I thought if I got some chickens and turned them loose in Bronco's vegetable garden, he'd go ahead and build that wall he wants. Yes, sir. Mr. Gilsey, are you trying to start a feud? Of course not. I'm just trying to get some action out of Bronco. Well, chickens should do it. Yeah, I've never seen hungrier-looking chickens. <laughs> well, I told the man I wanted them big and hungry. Now, let's get them out of the car. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll open the crate and you two grab the chicken. Why don't you grab a chicken? I'm opening the crate. <laughs> grab the rooster. Not me. I don't like the hungry look in his eyes. <laughs> He'd eat the buttons right off my shirt. I'll grab a couple. Oh, good for you, Bertie. Now come to Bertie. He ain't gonna hurt you. Yeah, you seem to have a way with chickens. Oh, yes, sir. There's some left, Leroy. I know. But they're way back in the corner of the crate. My little arm isn't long enough to reach them. My <laughs> little arm. Leroy, you're just afraid of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll get them. Come here, rooster. Yep. Oh, no, you don't. Oop, yes, he did. He wants to fight. Yeah, oh, chicken. Be nice. There we are. Hold him against him so he can't flap his wings, Miss Gilfie. Yeah, I, I've got it. Now he's quieting down. Yeah, sure he's quiet. He just swallowed your elk's tooth. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Let go, rooster. What do we do with him now, Miss Gilfie? Oh, just turn the darn things loose, Bertie. Yes, sir. And leave the crate open so it all come out. Yeah, there they go. They'll find Bronco's garden. The heck they will. They're heading right for your pansy bed. Oh. Chickens, get out of my flowers. Come on, Leroy. Let's chase them over to Bronco's. Okay. Yeah, chickens, get go. Tear them off, Leroy. The hens are running out of the house. Oh, let them go, Leroy. They'll find the garden by morning. Okay. Just help me herd the rooster over there. Shoo, rooster. Shoo. Hey, he's flying up in the tree. He's a roost up there tonight. Oh, no, he isn't. He's coming down right now. I can reach his way. Come down out of there. Oh, watch those wings. Oh, he knocked my hat off. God, he's a tough one. Well, he'd better watch it. We haven't had the minister over for Sunday dinner in quite a while. since daylight. All right, all right, we're all up. Look at him, strutting around the place as if he owns it. Pushy rooster. If I wasn't so sure for chasing chickens yesterday, I'd go out there and chase him right out of town. Hey, Yes, Leroy? The hens are in Bronco's garden. It's time they got over there. 
They ruined my flower bed. Yeah, and laid an egg in your hammock. <laughs> what? Look, I'm having it for breakfast. Mm, you can have it. I don't want anything to do with chickens. Oh, look, Uncle. Uncle's out in the yard now. Good. He'll be putting up the wall now. Yeah, I'd better go out and push this deal through so I can get rid of the chicken. Okay. I'm going to have Bertie cook my eggs. Yeah, I'll tell Bronco I'll pay for any damage. Good morning, Bronco. Oh, oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. I was just about to come over and have a little talk with you. Oh, something on your mind? Well, I was a little surprised to see the chickens when I came home last night. Chickens? Oh, yes. I didn't know you liked chickens around. Yeah, love them. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, when I saw those chickens of yours, I made a big decision. You did? Yeah. I got on the phone right away, and I... Oh, ordered the materials to build your wall, did you? Oh, no. No, I've always wanted chickens, and when I found out you like them, I ordered six crates. (laughs) More chickens? (laughs) Whoa, rooster, you shut up. Great Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. Nothing goes quite so well with the hamburgers we all like so much as really good coleslaw. And to be sure your coleslaw is at its delicious best, make it with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Miracle Whip will give it a wonderful flavor, a flavor that's peppy and yet just sharp enough, a flavor your whole family will like. Treat your folks to some good coleslaw soon. And remember, to make it better tasting than ever... Make it with the one and only Miracle Whip. Bertie. Oh, Bertie. Good morning, Mr. Gillsleeve. You down mighty early. Well, I thought I'd have breakfast and get down to the office before the chickens and the twins start tearing up the backyard. I don't think I can stand another day of it, Bertie. Yes, sir. <laughs> It's pretty lively out there. The twins chasing the chickens and the chickens chasing the twins. Rocks and cans are flying. No. Don't talk about it. Well, it won't last long, Mr. Gillespie. Pretty soon, Mr. Bronco will get tired of the chickens and they'll be gone. There won't be no more crowing and cackling when the sun comes up in the morning. Well, I don't mind the cackling too much. And before you know it, the little twins will be growing up and they'll be going to school. They won't be home no more. Yeah, I suppose. Then there won't be no more chickens scratching and singing around and no more little tights yipping and laughing under your window. Well... And the backyard will be empty and quiet and the grass will be all tidy. There won't be nobody there. Maybe just a rusty little old red wagon lying over in the corner. Little wagon. Then you can go out there and sit all by yourself. You won't have nobody or nothing to bother you. It'll all be gone. Bertie... I don't want it that way. I couldn't stand it. Ronnie! Linda! Come on over! (laughs) (laughs) Listen to that, Bertie. Isn't it beautiful? Good morning, Rooster. Come on over and bring your wife. (laughs) Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White. It is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Dick Trenner, and Dick McGrath. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday throughout the summer for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> How good can a sandwich be? Just make it with Miracle Sandwich Spread and see. Miracle Sandwich Spread is made by Kraft from America's favorite salad dressing, the one and only Miracle Whip, and some very special spicy relishes. It's different and mmm, delicious. Try it. Use it with your favorite sandwich filler or just by itself between slices of bread. Tomorrow, stop at your grocer's and bring home a jar of Miracle Sandwich Spread. Tonight, Groucho Marx presents You Bet Your Life on NBC.